I really, really want Crazy Raccoon to make a run in this tournament. <laughs> Just for the Japanese team. Like, come on, man. I yes. need this. I need this in my life for so many reasons. That was kind of like a clickbait title <laughs> for a course. Hello, ladies and gents. Welcome to the Valorant Global Legends. I'm DDK, and I'm here with a couple of legends. We've got Sean Gares, we've got Mike's HD as well. And we're going to talk a lot about champions. You have to be everyone in the way of your bracket, no matter how hard it is, like no matter if you have like Sentinels, first round, whatever. If you can beat all those teams, then you deserve to be the champ. I'm, I'm really stoked about the format. I could see the argument for double in playoffs, but I love the hype that comes with the do or die moments. So I'm not I'm not like a hundred percent. It must be double limb. I'm not one of those people. I think I'm very happy with this format, actually. So I do feel like we're we're just like putty in the hands of Riot. Like they'll release the minima skins when they, they don't want to make money, but when they want to make money, you know, they know what to do <laughs> to have well, us throw our credit cards at them. Yeah, so fifty percent of the profits I think that are created from this skin line go to the players. I believe that's actually higher than the revenue I was getting as a player in CSGO. Uh but even that is very contractually based. So this this seems a little bit different coming out of the Riot devs and I think it's such a good sign to have this this early in the game. I did not expect it. I know people are kind of saying like group D is kind of like the group of death, but I feel like most of the groups are pretty well balanced as best as you can do, really. Yeah, I, I kind of feel the same way. I think group D is by far the strongest group in my eyes. Uh, I think Vision Strikers is like an S tier team at this tournament disguised as just like a potential contender i am very very high on but we'll save Here's we'll save it we'll save it i th i just think all of those teams in group d are threats to vision strikers and i i hold them very high i think group a honestly is like has a lot of potential between envy ascend and i rate vivo keyed a lot i think he might diff c net honestly i feel like he could i feel like most of these groups have like kind of like the two pre-designated teams and then the rest are kind of uh a little bit tier behind i can't say that all the groups are perfectly even when group c group c i just think gambit is a cut above all three of those other teams right i think gambit is like almost a lock to get out their group with the, no the number one seat Fnatic Cloud9 Blue, obviously, that's a, that 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 just jumps off the page right at you. That matchup is straight fire, by the way. Fnatic and Cloud9 Blue, I think that's the one to watch in my eyes out of these opening matchups. But how do you guys vision Fnatic right now? Like, what do you what do you perceive of them as a team? Because they looked a little rough in their last showing. Things just seem off timing wise with their coronation, and that was the thing that made them like a really good team going into Iceland was they did everything together like all the set pieces were really nice and timed when i watch like whether it's like post plans or they're pathing into a site there's like a lot of weird gaps in pacing people are peaking too early people are going too fast behind everyone else while they're saying util up i hope they can put that together because obviously like you said they're such a creative team but obviously creativity doesn't matter much if you can't like piece it all together at the end but with all of that said, let's pick our favorites to win. I already went first earlier because uh, I'm the host. I get to do that. I get to cheat. Uh, so Cloud9 Blue for me, um, probably very misguided, but I, I believe in their um, adaptation. I think, you know, the run that they made through LCQ was, to me, I, I was never worried that they, would, whether they were going to make the run uh, and be successful. Hell, Ye called it as well. One of the podcasts with him, he called it too. And and I think, you know, one of the reasons why they did do so well was their adaptability. And I think going into a tournament like this, that is a huge factor in terms of your in terms of your ability to perform because you're going to be up against a bunch of different regions. Styles make fights. And, you know, I think Cloud9 have their, their form is getting better and better. They're in a really good spot as a team. So I, I think there's a lot of good arguments for Cloud9 Blue, but I know you guys think I'm absolutely mental. I remember talking to uh, Vandy before LCQ, and he said if they played 75% as well as they did in scrims, they would just own that event. I think that definitely held true. So I don't think your pick is a bad one. You got one leaf on the roster. I love how Vanity calls. And I think when I watch them play, they could win this tournament if it were online. 
but it's not online. <laughs> so, oh I, my god. I, that's not like I shot at their players because I haven't even really gotten to watch them much on LAN, but they're just very young players, right? They're very green into the scene. And it's not like a shot at them calling them Landshawks or anything. It's just they have a very treacherous road, right? Like they're in a group with Vision Strikers and Fnatic. For them to win the tournament, they need to get out of the group first, and then they have to win three straight best of threes against other top teams. My pick is Sentinels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty basic. <laughs> I'm pretty basic over here. Uh, I'm, I went with Sentinels not because I think, you know, they have by far and away like the best chance to win this event. They have a fire under them. They have a new coach. They're in a group where theoretically their only other contender is Liquid, which means that they should get out of their group. What do you think of the pickup of the coach? You know, was this them giving in because they were struggling? And, and then also, do you think this pickup makes sense to, to help them with whatever issues they were seemingly having? As someone that knows Shaz pretty closely and someone that's in game as well, so Rockus isn't going to come in and create new defaults for Sentinels or tell them how to play as far as, you know, their little things that they already do so well. He's there to find like little tricks, you know, gimmick setups, the stuff that Sentinels lacked when, and the reason why they probably faltered a little bit in Berlin once they had to put up massive amounts of rounds. So I think the biggest thing for them is they need a wake up call after Berlin, because for me, there's just so many things that are just like, this is what Sentinels does. You know, you don't have to worry about like them changing up too much. Cause like Haven, for example, right? When Sick is playing Phoenix, you know, he's going to flash out of garage on the fence within like the first 20 seconds. Um, you know, on attack, when they have like Sova ult or Phoenix ult, they're going to drone up long and they're going to hit the season. I think there's stuff like that where as a team or a player, you can really get like hindered and not really notice all these trends that you have going on, like all these tendencies. I think the biggest thing is just realizing for Sentinels, like, okay, everyone kind of knows how we play and now we need to like adjust that a bit because I think something we'll get into later is like the meta for the past few months hasn't really changed that much, which means going into this event. This is really like a time for refining for a lot of teams, like really making sure like fundamentals are ironed down, like you're really adding new strats in because you don't really have to worry about changing agents or like figuring out some new meta or how that's strong. I think the biggest thing going into this is like refining everything that you do. Who is yeah. going to win champions, Mike? <laughs> yeah, so I got Envy, obviously, no, no surprise there. I think it's going to be really good for them going in here because from Berlin, comp-wise, there isn't a whole lot they really need to change. With Chet now, obviously, they're going to be working on like adding more strats, more set pieces, stuff like that. So I'm excited to see what they've cooked up. And I think they were just so close last time. This time it should be a lot easier for them with more practice time. Before Berlin, you could have argued that they might have not been capable of making that run, but now that they showed they could make the finals, I'm confident they could have expanded their map pool. Chet probably has, like Mike said, a lot of pocket strats that people haven't seen, and he's done so much coaching, right? He's hopped teams, which means he has experience across multiple play styles, and he probably has a lot of stuff in his playbook. I guess I'm a little worried about how they can adapt if something happens to them in a game, because Envy doesn't seem like they have a lot of gears when I watch them. It seems like when they're winning, they just kind of destroy people, right? Like Ye is just running around destroying people, Marv's on top of his game. Crashies plays like super loose on this overall. And then the FNS just kind of like keeps it home, you know, like he doesn't really do anything crazy. He just tries to stay alive a lot of the times. Whoever wins this tournament is going to have either the most innovative tactics. So someone like Chet would come up really, really big, or they're going to have great in-game leading and the ability to like adapt and counter the aggression from the other teams, because you're not going to know what's coming at you in this tournament. Man, so let's, let's go through some of the Dark Horse picks then, as we you know we covered a few of the extra teams. I mean, I was going to pick Vision Strikers for that. I think, you know, I'm totally, totally sold on Vision Strikers as a great Dark Horse pick. But but um, are we being unfair? In this tournament, I feel like it's so many, it's there's so many teams that could win this and that you can make a strong argument for. That is kind of crazy. Like, do you guys feel the same way? There's a common theme of all my Dark Horse picks though, because I feel like they're pretty prone to crumbling on land just from lack of experience, which would be like Liquid and Gambit. 
and I would throw Cloud9 in as a dark horse pick, but I think they're probably more stable on land just from TS experience. But like Liquid, I just think back to Iceland where it felt like their bracket was pretty winnable for them and they fell a bit short. I don't know how Nevera is going to perform on the land because obviously he was just popping off since they've added him. From what I remember, I don't think he played that many lands in CS, if like many at all. Um, and Gambit's kind of a similar thing where even they kind of admitted themselves, they kind of felt like once they qualified for champs, the pressure was kind of off of them. And I just think back to like the 100 Thieves series, like once that pressure's on them, are they going to crumble because they're younger guys, you know? And now when everything really is on the line to be the best in the world at the end of the year, like, is that going to affect? I think Ascend's kind of in the same boat um, when it comes to land environments. And when you have all these teams like Sentinels, Envy, um, even some of these like lesser known teams, like Crew's been to every land so far for like international events, there could definitely be some upsets when you put nerves on the line, when those start factoring. I just feel like there's a lot of different angles you can go, like even Liquid um, with their dominant performance in Red Bull. There's just so many different angles you can go from. Um, it's going to be really interesting what the like top four even looks like by the time it's all said and done. Yeah, I, that, that's what I think too. And I, I don't know if Gambit is going to be able to maintain the form we saw in Masters. Like, I love... The fact that Nats is their star player on the, that supportive role, like the Viper Cypher player, but you know, I, I he used the the Viper Poison Orb glitch a lot <laughs> yeah. in Masters Berlin. Like I I was there watching the games, breaking them down, and you know that net that netted Gambit a lot of rounds. Like him using the Poison Orb dropping to to see his enemies like a quarter second early. And that's not going to be here. So that might sound very insignificant, but I can recall off, off the top of my head that that won them, you know, like six rounds throughout the tournament. I personally think Ascend is the team to look out for from Euro. People are massively sleeping on this team. I'm going to go through their games. I don't know why people are sleeping on them. So since Berlin, they 2 0 Supermassive Blaze, and then they lost 0 2 Division Strikers. Then they beat Supermassive Blaze again, Supermassive Blaze again, and then they had the crumble game against 100 Thieves. Like, that was their tournament, right? They threw that series against 100 Thieves on Breeze. Like, who knows what would have happened if they won that series? The 1 3 you see against Liquid in the best of five finals against Red in the Red Bull Grand Finals, their maps they lost, they lost 15 13, 13 11, and 13 11. Like, these are as close as possible. This team doesn't lose to bad teams. I think you'd be crazy to not think Ascend is going to make a run in this tournament. Let's take stock because we always do this. Uh, you know, we, there's always the argument or well, the discussion around which region is best and so on and so forth. But how do things stand going into the end of the year? You know, we've had this full year of VCT and we're coming to champions and we've we've had a pretty good look at all of the teams that are performing. So how, how do these uh, the, reg the regions stack up as it stands right now going into champions? If you're going to say ask me like which, which region has like the best teams at this event, I'm going to say NA. But when you ask me when you frame the question is which region has the most depth and the most you know, like they could round out a top 10 and that top 10 is just a, a much higher level, I think EU. I think EM, well EMEA. I think they have such a deep region with so so many top teams. I think the entire region might be better, but I think the top of NA is a little bit better than the top of the U. Based on the performances I've seen so far, I kind of SEA or BR on the bottom. BR on the bottom. Paper Rex looked pretty good, so I'm going to do SEA over them. Crazy Raccoon looked like they could hang. They're kind of down there with those guys, too. See, this is the thing, too. Korea has such a shallow scene. Like, there's like maybe 20 good players, but their top teams are insane. They're on I, Vision I Strikers roster. Yeah. They are. They're slowly <laughs> and surely all coming to Vision Strikers. And I have so much faith in Vision Strikers as a team at this tournament. I honestly want to pick them to win the tournament, but I'm a Sentinels fanboy. Different on the, like, in terms of depth between NA and EU, but I think that's, like, a completely different topic right now. Um, I think, at least for the rest of the regions, they're probably about right. The thing for me is, like, at some point, Brazil has to make a resurgence. I think we can uh, blame our boys over at Plat Chat a bit for starting the Brazilian like hype wave back at the start of the year before Iceland. 
but like there's just so much talent in that region especially all on these duelist roles at some point someone's bound to make like a super team and like sean's saying with korea i hope there was a tweet recently saying that there's going to be more orgs investing back into korea and i hope people get like kyoni someone buys lucky out of vision striker can actually watch that guy play a match like for once in my life um because there is really a decent amount of talent there's a world in which someone makes another korean super team kind of like new turn but maybe a bit better f4q i thought was also great to watch um sad yep. they had to disband but so what is act adding fracture in at this timing what does that mean for the teams playing if you want to go in against a top team and like cheese pick breeze and a veto because your map pool is not as good a lot of these teams like Sentinels or Envy or Gambit or whoever, they might just aim diff you on the map because it's such a large map. I feel like if you're a really good team going into this event and you're not super confident with your Fracture, that's a map if you let it into the pool that you could really get cheesed on because it's just such a like odd map in general. Like so many choke points, people are coming up with new stuff every day because it's been out for a month basically. So I think that will be a map where top teams may not lie it in as much, but I think lower tier teams will be trying to get that in where they can in the veto to get a little bit of an edge. Initially, I was very against Fracture, and it's kind of grown on me a little bit. And I'm just really curious how these teams are going to play it, because these are the teams that have put in tons of hours into just studying the map. So they're going to set the meta in ranked. After Champions, everyone's going to play like what they see at Champions. Thank you, everybody, for watching um, the Valorant Global Legends show brought to you by Gen G. And it's been an absolute pleasure and a blast to do a little preview show for all of you with Sean and Mike. And I mean, this is going to be an absolute, it's just absolutely insane tournament. You got to make sure you catch every single game. That's going to be all for myself, Sean and Mike. And we'll see you on the next one. Okay, so we kind of rounded things out here for like a North American victory. Um, and I'm not even North American. <laughs> we have all three North Americans. Everyone's disregarding this immediately because we picked three NA teams. Oh my yep. god, we did not just do that.